Guys, she's gonna show you how to do this. Stay tuned and enjoy the video. Look who showed up at my doorstep. Erica with Artist Till Death. Erica, where can they get in touch with you? You can find me at artisttilldeath.com, on YouTube at Artist Till Death. Basically everywhere that social media e, you can find me at Artist Till Death with two T's and two L's. So what she's going to show us today is a gorgeous opal marbly granite, I guess we're gonna call it. Yeah, we're amazing. not we're not sure where we're gonna end up, but we are using uh, some of Erica's. She has so many different types of uh, colors by Just Resin, Color Passion, Color Obsession. What's another one? Resin Art, Juke. Color Art, Too Faced, yeah. Alumalite, Tons. Stone Coat. Right, so she's a one stop if you want some amazing colors. All right, so what are we gonna do? Today, what colors are we gonna use? So I went ahead and mixed them up just to save time, but the colors I used are from Bling It, which is color art. You can find them on my website, but Interference Violet, Interference Blue, Interference Green, Interference Red, Interference Gold, Abalone, and Titanium White. That's the recipe that we're going with. All today. right, so we will link all of these colors in the description of this video. But for those that don't know, what is inter interference color? What does that mean? So when a color has an interference, essentially it has a color shift when that color hits light. A lot of colors will have like, it, it'll be red, but when the light hits it, you'll see gold. So it would be a gold interference red. But what we're using is not a base color, like the red would be the base color for that one I just used mm -hmm. as an example. These are white powders that are just basically the interference. You could mix these into other colors and give them this oh, interference shift. Okay. But That's we're cool. just using the interference to make like a holographic opal look. So we're doing three ounces per square foot. We have uh, prepped our surface. This is a piece of MDF. Actually, this is a portion of a countertop that uh, our students in our class learned to build and we've just cut it and made a sample board. But we've prepped mm -hmm. it with our stone coat countertop undercoating and we've let that dry for four hours. I love these colors. So in the first one I did, I just applied the colors in pockets. I think this time I'm gonna do maybe a dirty pour. So I'm gonna pour out now just the abalone. It's just gonna give me some pockets of glitter. All, All right, so this is the abalone and it's just a a very, very fine glitter color. I don't know if you guys can see that on the camera. It's subtle sparkle, but the sparkle is rainbow fleck. So it, it's kind of like a diamond dust or the Milky Way that we carry, but it has all the colors. Okay, I'm gonna heat this up just real quick. Just to get the bubbles out, okay. All right, so you've just, now are you gonna make a grease coat on that or just? I'm not doing a full grease. I'm just doing patchy grease. Okay, so what we mean by grease coat is a lot of times we'll do a finish, maybe like a, an exotic pour or a melded marble, and we actually come in and spread a very thin layer of epoxy. And what that does is helps the next layer of epoxy that we pour to really flow nicely. But she's not doing the whole piece, just random little areas. And this is, like you said, just the abalone is in there. Now, if you didn't have abalone, you could put diamond dust. Mm -hmm. Right. All right. You want something subtle, a subtle shimmer. Right. There's glitter powders out there, but mm -hmm. some of those, um, you gotta be careful with glitter because if you get a cheap glitter that's just stained, uh, like silver flecks, and when you put it in resin, it, that color will melt off. It melts off. Yeah, exactly. So the first time I did it, I just added patches of these colors. Okay. But then the other day, oh. Jeff, my husband. She just got married, guys. Fact. Congratulations. He just poured them all in. Are you pouring the whole thing or just a little bit each time? All right, so what we're doing is we're just layering these colors in the cup. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's even... There's no rhyme or reason. No, yep. No rhyme or reason. But this, this is gonna make it look holographic. But it's okay if there's some left, because okay. then we'll just Let's fill it. it. There we go. All right. So I'm gonna do just areas of this. Oh, wow. All right, so by layering them in the cup, when you pour them out, they just give a really pretty 
melding. I mean, you're getting all the colors, but they're just almost kind of a layered look. Mm -hmm. I usually wouldn't recommend doing a dirty pour or an exotic pour like that with just powders mm -hmm. because it's a particle suspended in resin. You're really risking them just mixing together. Yeah, exactly. But for what I'm trying to do, that works. Awesome. So I'm just pouring out the rest of these interferences in the dry pockets. Okay, so I'll just come in here and help you out here. So we're just taking what's left in the cup and just kind of hitting different areas. What's super crazy about this is what I see is not the same as what the camera sees, what you see, right. what anyone sees. It's all in how that light hits it. Mm -hmm. Also, because this is a majority white finish, this gold interference will act as your pre-amber color. Oh, okay, like a real pearl color, yeah. Okay, so now that I have exhausted all of that resin, I'm gonna put my translucent white. So I used that that's on the tip right there is how much white I mixed. And that was what, the, the uh, titanium this white? This is titanium, yeah. I okay. just used that amount. So we are going for more of a translucent white that you can kind of see through. Right. Okay. So I can fully see through this. All right, good. I am gonna swirl a little bit of my mm. opaque white into here. Not mix it in, just swirl it. All right, so what she did now is took the opaque white, poured just a little bit in there, and now that's given, wow. Okay, that's way pretty. So it's kind of like an exotic pour of yeah, white. Right, so you have your translucent white and because you mixed a little bit of that opaque white, you're getting that marbling effect coming right out of the cup. Mm -hmm. Pre-marbled, if you will. Yes. So now I'm gonna go through and just fill in essentially all the dry patches with whatever's close to it. I'm just gonna touch it with my finger and fill it in. All right, so we're just filling in dead space now. Mm -hmm. All right. You can also skim meld or... Yeah, very lightly. Just rub it in, just rubbing it in. All little nooks and crannies. Yeah, I love, I've done that where you put black, like in a transparent black, translucent black, and then you put the opaque black. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love how that looks. Okay, all right, so, wow, this is very cool. I haven't even really done anything and it's just, it already just looks so down. neat. Yeah. Now what are you gonna do? I'm gonna take this opaque white and this is opaque white. You cannot see through it. You can't see any of the stick color. So you use the same product. It's still the Just Resin White. You just added more product so it's made it very opaque, okay? Right. Okay. I really want this to be heavy because the idea with this is I'm gonna put thin lines that are gonna sink and shift. So I don't really have any idea what I'm doing right now. I'm just putting lines down. I'm being random. Random, very random. But since Rhonda always tells me to be random, I'm gonna let her be random. Okay, Bowie. All right, so this fun, just being able to get just colors going. I like to kind of sometimes make them come close together and then kind of break out from one another. That was an impressive whip you just did. Did you see that? I'm very impressed. All right. See, your Just Get Random looks so much more refined than my Just Get Random. My random looks like you sneezed <laughs> when you did that, didn't you? <laughs> this is random. All right, is that enough, ma'am? Or would you like yeah. some more? Looks good. All right, why don't you go the crossways? I'm not good at the crossways. So are you trying to go this way? Just, I don't know. Let's let this live for a minute and then we'll see if we want to do the crossways. All right. So we're gonna heat it. And because there's so much of that product in the white, like she says, it's heavier and it's starting to sink. It is, it's already actually under some of the colors because it's such a heavy body white. And so once it sinks, this I guess would be not a pour in place type gig type of design, which you could do it with just a heat gun, but I always let the white sink a bit and then tilt it and that's how you start getting the shifting. Right, that the, shadow. That shadow from the vein, yeah. That's from the translucent white and the clear and all the other colors are rolling over that opaque white. And when you tilt like that, it gives a cohesive look to all the veining, all the lines of color, all the striations, everything mm -hmm. you just did has a consistent cohesive flow to it. Right. 
Beautiful. I don't know if I'd even like add any more whites. I don't know lines. if I'm going to. I like I like just the simplicity of those few veins. Oh, that's beautiful. I might tilt it back okay. towards your corner just okay. because it's looking a little bit consistent. Like yeah. it's fat line, fat line, fat right. line. Yeah, so you want to kind of bring them out, bring these bigger, thick lines. May yeah. have to heat it. I don't know what's happening over there. Okay, let's put I it trust down. You. Oh, see, now I love this area right here. It just looks like one big piece of, oh, love this, guys. I, I don't know if you can see the depth in this piece, but this is absolutely stunning. It just looks like there's layers upon layers upon layers of color. A lot of times when I do pour in places, it's in older houses, houses that have settled, and so it's a little bit off anyways. So I can still achieve this shifted look because it's going to kind of flow. Mm -hmm. Meaning what she's saying is that if she does a on-site pour and maybe the countertops aren't perfectly level, she's gonna get this movement of this epoxy kind of sliding mm -hmm. all on its own. You just gotta make sure you don't want countertops that are really off level because then everything's gonna just completely run off the edge of the, the countertop. Right. All right. So I was mm -hmm. concerned about these patch patch, patch, mm -hmm. patch of color. But since we're going to spray paint and alcohol anyways, I'm not gonna be that concerned about it because I can break I, it up with that. I think it's gorgeous because it, as it moved, it almost like that translucent white kind of went over those colors a little bit. Mm -hmm. And it just it just makes it look like there's so much depth. There's All some right. peekaboos of some, yeah. color, some peekaboos of the abalone. Okay, Gar Erica, I have to say, this is, just breathtakingly stunning. I love it. This, guys, could be a finish all on its own. But I'm going to take it to the next level. How about that? Can I do that? So excited for you to do that. All right, so here we go. got these skills that I do not have. Oh, whatever. All right, so here we go. Where's our paint? What we're gonna do now is we're going to granify it, which is what I call it. But we're only gonna granify certain little spots. So if you guys watched the video I did a couple of weeks ago where we were doing a customer's countertop where we did the granification just in small areas, Erica loved that when we did that. So her sample board, when she showed me, had that granification on it and I was like, that is awesome. But know that you can stop here, but we're gonna go to the next step. So let us know in the comments below, what would you do? Would you stop here or would you do what I'm fixing to do? All right, here we go. All right, Miss Erica, where do you think we should put this? <sighs> okay, so typically when I do things like this, mm -hmm. it's to fix things that I'm not that happy with. Mm -hmm. That's when I resort to okay. things like this. So I think I love this, mm -hmm. but this is one of the areas where it's like too... too that, and see, when I look at it, my eye just kind of goes right there because there's just like a lot of color right there. It just it's not, It doesn't look like it flows. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're kind of thinking? Yeah, so I'm thinking. Okay. All right, so we'll do that here. So what we're going to do come do is come in with white gloss Rust-Oleum, and we're going to do it fairly thick. And we're not just going to do it in a little area. We're not going to do it all over. It's just very random, but in a concentrated area. Then we're going to come over with some bigger drips first. And then I like to come back and just get a little bit of color on my ends of my fingers so I can kind of flick it. Now, it's super important that you don't put too much alcohol and you have to let this do its job. Uh, it's gonna take three to five, eight minutes before you're gonna actually say, wow, I really like this. So, you like it? Yeah. Okay, so anywhere else? I, it has to be somewhere yeah, else. I just haven't need to... figured out where. So, in my pieces as an artist, you know that you, since you have it here, you don't want it here. Right, right. You don't want it to be even. Symmetrical, yeah. You want it to kind of be off kilter. For sure. So, I'm thinking... So, we're going to have to go, like, here? Yeah. Or somewhere in here? you can't do here. Right. You can't do here. I'm, th mm. 
Let's do it a little here. So maybe a little bit of that white will mm -hmm. roll over on the edge and give us a really cool looking edge. Sure. Will that work? All right. So, and again, we're not going to do a big area. And this is just plain isopropyl alcohol. Get my edges so I don't have hard paint lines. And then we're just gonna kinda let it do its thing. Since this interference is a mica, you can do your Oh yeah. The so, deal. You, so you I'm gonna do a little bit. So I'm gonna do over the whole piece. And like Erica said, because the powders that we use are a mica powder, they will really react to the alcohol and get some really cool designs. Okay, now it just looks like raindrop on a unicorn river. Yes. And I'm here for it. <laughs> All right, so what do you want to do now? I think we're going to have to let it live for a minute so that we can yep. re-alcohol. So what's happening is we're letting the spray paint kind of start showing us what we need to do next. So what we're seeing is that there's a large area of the spray paint that didn't fracture. So what I'm gonna come in and do, I'm gonna put a little bit of a bigger drop on my finger and I'm gonna come in and put a little bit bigger areas and open up that white spray paint. Let's see, if it were me, I'm just saying, I would probably, I like to do things in threes. So I would probably put just a tiny little piece right here, just or even right here, maybe to make it random. But yeah. what do I you would think? Do then a smaller one here. Just a very wanna, no, not that. Yeah, I like that. I, don't I cover like, that. Yeah, I don't want to cover that. Okay, so. so what if we put just a little tiny, just just to kind of draw your eye, just a tiny bit right here. Of note, we did not come directly across the street from this one because it would not be proper. We are back set a little bit, so it's just a little off. Yeah, and it's just a tiny piece, like it's just, oh, wow. I love that this one is faded white, whereas this is a little bit more harsh, so maybe after there's a little bit more evaporation, we'll just dust. Yep. To have more of a fade out like this one. Yes. Also, since whites are almost never the same white, this other white is adding another layer of dimension because even though it's white on white on white, it's a different white. Exactly. And that's how that, that monotoning, you're getting depth. So, all right. So we'll let this sit just a little bit and we'll come back and let you guys see what it looks like. I'm really into this one because it fades out. And this one is kind of a hard stop, mm -hmm. kind of a harder edge. So I'm gonna go in with spray paint and just dust the outside edge so that Rhonda can add more alcohol to fade it out, to gotcha. blend it more into the full design. Got it. I'm scared. Give, give this spray paint a little softer edge, I guess. Okay. Now I'm gonna come in very lightly because I don't want, again, for there to be hard edges. So I'm just barely coming in with a little bit of the alcohol on my glove and kind of flipping it in a little bit. Eric is over here saying, yes. I can hear her. <laughs> <laughs> then that probably sounded super creepy. Okay. And because she came back and just barely put any spray paint, like she said, it's just bringing it out and it's so very, very soft. I want it to look like a full piece, like a cohesive thought. Right. And if there's just like, it looks like it's setting on top, then it's going to be distracting. So you right. have to kind of work it into your design. Make that. It's just super soft. Wow. This is gorgeous. Love it. Okay. You nailed it. Awesome, guys. Always love what she comes up with. Okay, guys. So if you like this piece, give us a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel. That way you guys will know every time that we post a video or we go live. We go live every Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Central Time on YouTube here. So check us out. Okay, so all of these products, again, we are going to link in the description of this video. They will be available on Erica's website, artist 
tilldeath.com. We will also put a link for you guys down below. All right, guys, until next time, you know what to do. Don't be scared. Move forward and be creative. Love you guys. See you next week.